Good morning, friends, and welcome to Bethesda Online. It's October, that means a new theme, a new month, and this month we're learning all about gratitude and letting others know that you're thankful for what they have done. And who we're most thankful for, of course, is God. And if we just take a minute to think about everything God has done for us. He sent His Son for us. He gave His life for us. He loves us so much. We can always be thankful, no matter what, even when things are hard. So that's what our Bible story is about today, having a heart of gratitude and always giving thanks to God. So enjoy. We have an opportunity to practice thankfulness and gratitude. So after this, I want you guys to take one minute and tell whoever you're watching Bethesda Kids Church Online with three things that you're thankful for today. How does that sound? I know I am thankful for you guys, I'm thankful for my family, and I am thankful for God. So tell everyone around you what you're thankful for. Enjoy today, and we hope to see you soon. Where does gratitude start? With your words? Oh, uh, hold on one second. Hello? Oh, thanks. In your head? What about your heart? Being thankful includes all of those things, your heart, your head, and your words. But I think gratitude truly begins with your eyes. It starts with paying attention, stopping to see the people around you and all the other beautiful things in your life, like the way your dad buttered and cut your toes just the way you like it. That crossing guard standing in the pouring rain to make it safe for you to get to school. The way your kid brother can turn even cleaning your room into a party. Your fingerprints that God designed for you and no one else in the whole world. That amazing, breathtaking sunset on the way home from dance class. When you truly see these things, it changes your heart. The words bubble up in your mind and you can't help but say thank you. The more you remember to thank God and the people around you, the more others can see God at work in you. And that's why gratitude is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Feeling down, you pick me up. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Oh, oh, oh. And even in the deepest, darkest night, you help me see. Sing it out now. Oh, oh, oh. I just want to say thank you for the way you love me. I want to say thank you.
Oh, John, John, oh. I prepared you a very special bowl of cereal. Awesome, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm starving. <laughs> yeah. mm. Mm. Yeah. Actually, um, mm. <laughs> there is something else I wanted to show you. Come here. Uh, is that a mini fridge? <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. I love refrigerating things. Yeah, sure. You... Was it no soda? No, no. But I do have this. What do you think? <laughs> you see, a cheesemonger is someone who selects various cheeses. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually not that hungry anymore. I just ate a whole bowl of cereal. Come with me. Okay. Look. Wow. You're welcome. Those clouds are beautiful. I think I see a unicorn. <laughs> what do you see? Hey, did you like that cheese plate I sent you? Simple thank you would have been nice. And I'm John. And today on The So-and-So Show, we're talking about gratitude. Which is when you're happy you're graduating. No, that's gratitude. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was when you wear a really classy fedora and tip it at people jauntily. Hello. That's hattitude. <laughs> it's when you're being a sassy kitty. Meow. Catitude. Today we're talking about when you're a mouse that wants to be a chef in an animated movie. Ratatouille, dude? Oh, that is fun. <laughs> it is, but you, you really do know what gratitude means, right? It's, it's about being thankful for things. Yeah, yeah. What's the problem? I don't know. Life was just really stressful this year. The quarantine, the social distancing, all of it. It's, it's hard to find things to be grateful for. Hmm. I know someone who might be able to help you. Someone who specializes in finding things. Someone who knows stuff. How's it going? Hi, Leonard. Boy, have a seat. <laughs> Thank you. For those people who may not be familiar, why don't you tell them who you are and what you know? Uh, my name is Leonard Fortescue, and I am a profession Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> My name is Leonard Fortescue, and I am a professional metal detectorist. I search for lost and buried treasure with my handy dandy metal detector here. Her name is Camilla. If it's lost, I'll find it. But I, I'm trying to find things to be grateful for. I don't think you can help me unless what I'm grateful for is made of metal. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I find other things all the time. I even found a dog once. <laughs> yeah, it was my own dog. Well, where was he? <laughs> he was in the backyard. <laughs> I don't know where he thinks of those things. I don't know why he's back there. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> well, However, <clears throat> in all my years of searching, one lesson I have learned 
is that you can find treasure in the strangest places. Mm. Sometimes in the sand, sometimes in the dirt, and every now and then, even in silk. Those are all really similar things. And in the spirit of that, I think we should play a game. A, a game? If you insist. Good in the bad. Leonard, do you normally go around with two big buckets of cottage cheese? You can't make me answer that. Now here's the general gist of the game. As you can see, these two vats are filled to the brim with moldy cottage cheese. But buried deep inside is a gold coin, just like the first gold coin I ever found when I was seven years old. You found your first gold coin in a vat of cottage cheese. I've said too much. Find the gold coin and I'll let you keep it. Sound good? No. Now start searching when you hear the sound of the signal. All right, what's the signal? Oh, yeah, that looks good. If we're looking at go down deep, look on the side. Uh, up, I found it. Ah, <laughs> you got it. See, even good stuff can come out of bad. Look at that gold coin you got. It's not a pure gold coin. It's like a chocolate gold coin. The wrapper's gold. Don't you want it? Not particularly, no. Well, fair enough. I'll take it. I'm going to be sick. Oh, yeah. You know what? We did learn something. What did we learn? Oh, that uh, chocolate goes really good with cottage cheese. Then you just take a big gump. Well, uh, oh, that's good. Oh. Hey, you sure you don't want them? Hmm. Oh, it's Bible story time with Cameron. <laughs> Hey guys. Hey Cameron. Hey, thanks for filling in while our friend Kellen's on vacation. You bet. Hey Cameron. What's going on? Ah, uh, it's nothing. I, I can't find anything to be grateful for. Oh, and my elbows smell like cottage cheese. Well, I can't help you with your elbow problem, but the story today might give your gratitude a boost. Great. What are we talking about? Today, we're looking at 1 Thessalonians 5.18. The Apostle Paul wrote, give thanks no matter what happens. No matter what happens? That's what he wrote. How is that possible? I'm not sure. Maybe we can get some answers from Count Lupe and Mr. Fritter. One day, Count Lupe and Mr. Fritter were walking home from a movie. Oh, I just loved that film, Count. As did I, Mr. Fritter. It's amazing how many sports that dog has learned to play. On their way, they encountered Wanda Watermelon who was blocking their path. Excuse me, we'd like to get by, please. What did you say? Oh, dear. He said, Madame Watermelon, that you are blocking the whole sidewalk. Roll aside. Wow, thank you so much. That was very kind of you, Wanda. Thank you, schmank you. She would not have budged were it not for my stern upbraiding. I showed her. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no. Count Lupe didn't give thanks like Mr. Fritter, and he paid the price. So let me just remind them what the Apostle Paul wrote. Give thanks no matter what happens. Give thanks no matter what happens? After what we've been through? Impossible! There is nothing to be thankful for after being squished by a watermelon. Oh, that's not true, Count. I'm thankful for our friendship. I'm thankful for how cute kittens and puppies are. I'm thankful for a clear day when the forecast said it was supposed to rain. Just look around at all we have to be thankful for. No! I refuse to look. Then feel the warm breeze. Smell the smells. At least listen to the sounds of nature. No! There's nothing to be thankful for. I am not listening. Roll away! Whoa, 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 whoa. I think we've seen enough. The point is, when you're not grateful, when we don't give thanks, 
there are consequences. We're probably not going to get squished by a watermelon, but not having gratitude can slowly turn you into someone who's rude and unhappy and grumpy all the time. And that's not good for anyone. So let's see what Paul wrote one more time. Give thanks no matter what happens. And then Paul gave us a really good reason to give thanks. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. No matter what scary things are going on in the world or in your life, you can always be thankful that Jesus loves you and that he died for you and that he's more powerful than all the scary things, even death. What do you think of that, guys? Does that help? Absolutely. I'm way more grateful now. I'm grateful for Jesus. I'm grateful for the dulcet tones of Cameron's voice explaining biblical <laughs> concepts to me. There's so much to be grateful for. Thanks, Cameron. Anytime. I'm grateful for you, too. Oh, thanks. See you next time, Cameron. Next time. You know, I hope I don't feel like I'm leaving you out, buddy. I'm, I'm very grateful for you, too. Oh, well, I'm grateful that you're grateful. Oh, well, I'm grateful that you're grateful that I'm grateful. Are you trying to out-grateful me? Maybe. <laughs> Reveal the question! Oh, what are you grateful for? Yeah, it can be anything. Finding a $5 bill in your pocket that you forgot about. Or, or biting into a delicious mustard and gummy bear sandwich. No. Right. Oh, oh, or something huge, like knowing God sent his son to save us. Talk about it together. What are you grateful for? Oh, pandas. I think we've given them enough ideas. I love those pandas. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Brandon. I'm John. And this has been the So-and-So Show. Do you know what you get if you cross a panda? with uh, Neapolitan ice cream. Oh, I love jokes. Uh, I don't know, what do you get? Uh, a panda with ice cream in his fur. Well, I think I just came out with a new invention. Gold coins and garlic cheese. Do it like an Oreo? I, oh, oh, I yeah. can do an Oreo. Yeah, look at that. Look, I was thinking, I think you taste a little different than John's black. Huh? Sweet and sour barbecue, garlic cheese. Ugh. Mm. Delicious. Okay, I can't eat more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs>